um, branches because each one of those is like an individual branch. You can have each branch head off in a different direction. You could use it for supports for buildings and so forth in that way. Have them un, you know, unspiral and join up to different shapes. Um, or grow into like an open swirling ball and then back into a, a, a swirl again. Anyway, a couple of things I'm thinking of, but make sure everyone has access. Okay, one, two, three, four, okay. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a voxel and I'm gonna share it with you guys. It's gonna be green to start off with, but I'll make it a friendlier color. Okay. This is just your classic um, quarter voxel or an eighth voxel, half a voxel, whatever you want to call it. But essentially, it's half the size of a normal voxel um, and it's offset to one side. You'll notice if you look over it, it sits in one corner. So we can do a bunch of funky things with that when we want to make shapes. Take one. How do you make that? If you oh, have so one of the, it's, it's a challenge. You can take a copy of that. I would suggest you do. It's a clean, what I would call a clean microvoxel, which means all the fronts are the same size and they all work the same. It can be very hard to get one. Actually using a voxel forge, you press on the sides and the center until it actually becomes a cube in one corner. Um, I think, uh, Schrodinger has some very good guides in using voxel forges. Um, there's also a copy of this on the template wall, the ultimate template wall, and a couple of the others as well. But I would suggest using this one particular one that I've got here because it is very pure. I've checked it a couple of times. So the next stage, one of the big stages here is making it a flat plate. I take one and I put it in the middle. I'm just doing this with green so it's easy for you guys to, oh, maybe I'll change color. It'll probably be easier for you to see if I change color. Okay. Uh, that's a better color. White. I'll do it in white. Give me a second. Okay. So. If I take it, and I will have to spin it around a couple of times, but if I take it and go to each of the four corners, I can begin to pull it out into a flat panel, which is exactly two normal voxels wide, but it's still only half a voxel thick, right? Now, in this case, the shape I want for the spirals is actually going to be inverted slightly. So I'm going to take one of the corners and I'm going to spin it around. I'm just going to put it in back in the spot where it was. Spin it around twice so it sits on the inside rather than... Oh, I missed. So I'm going to put it on the inside rather than the outside for this example. So see how I've got half or a quarter of a circle now, and it's one quarter of a voxel wide. I can grab that middle shape, ground, I'll pop it in space because it's sitting in the top half of the voxel. If I put another one on top, it's now and a half voxels high, but the top one is half a voxel and the bottom one is one full voxel offset upwards. So as an example there, mouse over that one if you want to have a look. I'm going to paint so if the I take first that, ones. Yep. Thank you. So, if I take that voxel, and you're watching that green voxel now, okay, I'm going to invert it on the axis, so I'm going to flip it over, 
because that one is only half a voxel high. So I'm going to flip my shape, the big shape over, and I've actually squished that voxel in between flat. So there's actually three voxels there. It looks like it's the width of two, but it's actually three voxels wide, and you get a little sliver like that. I'm going to need that sliver, so I'm just going to put it over here and paint it white. Yeah, that's a good idea. Count the number of voxels. You can see each one is an individual voxel and it becomes a sliver. So we can take any shape and make a sliver. In fact, another thing you can do later on if you're interested is you can take two different shapes that you've created an offset and you can mush the middle one and it will be an amalgam of the two shapes externally. You're essentially uh, warping all the sides to create a new shape. And that's how you can create things like hexagons and pentagons, and octagons and other shapes that are actually theoretically impossible in the system. Um, they can only be flat, but you can make them. Anyway, so the sliver is the next part of what we want to do. Now, what I want to do here is I want to move the edges up and down and I want to change them. So I'm going to grab two things. First of all, I'm going to make another sliver. I'm going to take one of my little cubes. Okay. I'm going to make a long cube by extruding it on both sides and flipping over once. And you notice it's now a full, it's a quarter vox, it's half a voxel wide by half a voxel high, but it is a full two voxels wide. And you can grab that in the middle. And you grab that one and say, for example, I want that white one on the end. I can then move another one of these green bars over top of that one and create another sliver. This sliver is don't know how easy that one is to see. I'll just paint it for you. That one is a quarter, it's half a voxel high, half a voxel wide, and a sliver thin, or an anti-voxel thin. So what we can do with that one is we can start to manipulate the triangles that we want to use for things. For this example, I'm going to use a triangle. So now, I need one more shape, and this one is a purely normal flat bar that is one wide and one high. That one just there, I just paint it for you. I made that right, or have I stuffed it up? No, I stuffed it up, just give me a second, sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to unpaint, I'm going to paint that one and I'm going to unpaint some of the others so that you guys know which one I'm talking about. So if I grab, for example, that little one that I've just created, I move him into a piece of space, and I paste one of those little slivers that I made in front of it, I can make a triangle. And if I flip that, tri if I flip it on the blue axis, I can make a longer triangle. So that way I can actually control the size of the triangle that I want to create. 
manipulate any of the sides using either the long four or the two or the three or whatever I need to, I can, I can change the shape of the triangle. So in this example, what I want to do is make two different types of triangles. Well, basically, actually, it's one triangle. I'll show you. Um, what we're going to do is we want the triangle to be full long. Have I got that right? Or I missed? I missed. So we can start manipulating the triangle's shape with that. Now, what I particularly want in this case is create a triangle that is actually lower than it should normally be. So how did I do this before? <laughs> if we then grab, say, for example, let's make that flat panel from before. Just going to grab that. Now, if I grab the panel I had before, go over there, I'm just going to stand next to it. I want to change it. I can, for example, grab thinking. So what I want to do now is I would rather create a half triangle. So grabbing your voxels again, do a one quarter voxel. So I'm going to do it right in front of me right here. I'm going to create one for the middle. And it's going to be on the edge that I'm going to use. I'm going to create one next to it on this side. Okay, and then one on the other side of it. And then one behind it to create a triangle to the side. I usually have all these space, all these shapes put aside for me. Now with that, you can create by pushing on it with a flat bar. I'll just make it green so you can see what happens. Amethesk, real quick. Yeah. I yeah. actually do have to log, but I'm streaming. Is that, is that okay if I just stay here streaming and come, like, tap yeah. the keyboard every little bit to make sure I don't go out of game? No, that's fine. Because I really want to see this. <laughs> I'm going to put it on YouTube, if that's okay. Uh, is yeah. a tutorial under your name, and I'll, I'll, it'll, cool. it'll probably tweet you when it goes live, actually. I'll just do that a simple way. All right, so if I want, I can push it like that, or I'm going to come back over to this one here. Come up to here, and I'm going to change the shape slightly by 
moving my little cube to a different position. Again, I'm going to rotate it till it's next to itself where it was before. It's not exactly doing what I was intending for it to do. Anyway. Um, you can grab that shape. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before. So we're going to make a offset voxel by stacking it on top of itself. Now the bottom one will be one voxel wide, but offset by half a voxel. Highlight it for you. See, we're going to smoosh the green one between two layers. So it becomes a wafer. Put that wafer out there, green wafer. Now we can rotate that wafer on one axis. We're going to go back to our example over here. Uh, the, we're going to look at the box right next to me. Okay. Rotate it. So that rather than being flat, okay, it's sitting upright. I can take that waveform and put it down beside our previous flat shape. You'll notice, oh, there we go. See how it suddenly pans up? See that one beside me where it's panned up? Now, if you highlight <coughs> over that, you will see that it's, the point is actually at the top of a standard voxel comparative to where it should be. So it's actually one edge is up. I flip that over and then I rotate it and put it on the other side. I get an inverted pattern. But now the other half of it is one voxel down. If you look at it from the angle where you can see the two green sides, you can see how it's different. Can you guys all see that? Does that make sense? Have I lost anybody? I'm trying to write it down. <laughs> so, I can do it, but I'm not too sure I understand it. <laughs> when you when you play with the little green ones for a little, uh, when you play with those little quarter voxels for a little while you'll get used to them it takes a lot i've been playing with quarter voxels for about a week now to actually learn how to do this so don't be surprised if you don't get it in your first lesson um, as schrodinger said you uh, she is streaming it so you can can come back and look at it again um, my suggestion is to just learn to play around with those quarter voxels a little bit but that shape there it actually is offset slightly. Now, because it's not gonna to touch any voxels that are around it, and it has invisible air slivers between it, you can actually do things like I'm gonna do over here in front of Schrodinger and stack them. And see, they touch, but they don't deform each other because they're actually two voxels high. Wow. Now, what you can then do is you can select a set of them and rotate them. What I'm doing in this case is that I'm leaving them separated by one space, but you won't be able to see it on the thing because it's actually a sliver of air wide. And then I'm placing them next to the other voxel that I've been, the, the other ones that I've just created. And you'll see the half pattern right there. You can kind of see it looks like two triangles that are offset, but they're not deforming each other because each one of them is one voxel apart from the next. It just looks like they're touching. You're essentially fooling the eye into thinking it's a solid object when really it's a bunch of separated objects. And if you look at it from the, the flat side, you can see the pattern on the inside and you look at the other side, you can see that cutting edge sliding around. Yeah. Okay, so if you then grab that shape and you don't want to flip it, you have to rotate it because we've made this with a rotation in mind. If you flip it, you'll get the opposite pattern. Um, what we need to do is we need to rotate it. So I'm going to make it. I'm going to turn it around 45 degrees, uh, 
180 degrees, and then I'm going to match it up again, and I get the other half of my spiral. Now that one is made with a triangle, triangle. but anything you can do you can, with a triangle, you can do with a different shape as well. The ones over on the other side that we were looking at earlier were done with a, um, with a, um, a two voxel wide space. And this is using similar principle, but instead of using a flat point, you have to use a one voxel wide offset sliver. Um, to do that, you can take the normal offset one voxel and then you'd get a one that is one off and you can actually create a slant. I'll make an example to show you. So if I take my little voxel cube, my little one quarter voxel, I can do one of two things. I can paste it, okay, and then I can paste it to the left side and it's offset, or I can paste it another one to it, and paste it to the right side, and that voxel itself will be straight. And I'll paint it to give you an example. <laughs> now, if you line those up or we'll go over them with your cursor, you will see one is offset i.e. once it's in the middle and one is offset by half a voxel. So if you grab either one of them, place it in this piece of space, and then you take the other one and you paste it in a piece of space next to it, Ooh, sorry I missed. Um, It will change the shape. Now, if I just paint that second one that I added, you will see that it has made it into like an offset square. If I wanted to, I could flip that, either of those shapes, and strand it out to be either one voxel wide, one and a half voxels wide, or two voxels wide. So, in this example here, I'm going to paint that again. So I need to unpaint that. I'm going to grab that painted one. Okay. To put it into the same spot. But I'm going to flip it along, in this case, the red axis. Oops, it's on the opposite side. We'll see. Oh, I've missed. Sorry, I should just be doing this on the floor. It'd be a lot easier for you guys to visualize. Okay, I've now expanded it so it's now one and a half voxels wide. And it's actually offset by one whole voxel. Now that's the one I use as an example for making staircases. So you place them one apart from each other. Expand it so it's two whole voxels wide. And then it ends. Okay. And some aiming cut. Sorry, I'll just be a second. I'm just trying to capture this voxel and move it. Hey, uh, sorry about the interruption. Where, uh, where are you guys located? Currently, we're at my claim. You can teleport to Schrodinger if you want. 
And is this a class or, or what is it? Oh, I'm just demonstrating how I've made spirals. Why is it doing that? Oh, they am going to change it. Sorry, guys. Playing with these voxels can be challenging at times. I bet. Okay. So, grab that little bar that I've got there, which is two voxels wide and one voxel. Um, and two voxels wide, two voxels high, but is it at a slant? And you can actually put them next to each other without them touching. There. So, for example, now you have completely straight rail, not actually touching itself. There's nothing in between them, but it looks like it is. You can use that as a stair rail if you slope it up upwards. It is, currently it's deforming the ground, but that is only because I'm doing it in the top half. Flip it, I can actually make it flat with the ground. Right next to each other, I'm now making it flat with the ground. You have a number of options about where you can place it. You're literally you're splicing voxels in half and using either one half or the other half of the voxel. What we want to do for this example is we're going to make a different shape. We're going to grab a even voxel. to replace one of the ends I've just created over here with the green with my new even voxel. So it's going up half a voxel and across one and a half voxels. That's the shape I want. And then what I can do is if I come back over to uh, I paste it on top of each other like last time You'll see I get a voxel that is that for you. One voxel high, but offset by half a voxel. And then paste that inverted on top of itself. To make another one of those slivers, which is in the middle. Yeah. We still have a sliver. I'm going to rotate my sliver. And now I'm going to paste it back onto that shape from before. Making sure I line it up right. Make sure I line it up. I've pushed one edge up now, and I'm going to rotate it once. Flip it again on the green axis. Sorry, I just accidentally undid what I did before. I can I, I can manipulate either end up or down a different voxel. In this case, I'm going to manipulate that one down and rotate it. Manipulate the other one to go up. 
Okay. And if I don't want the right shape. Yeah, I've got a new component for a spiral, which I can stack. Again, take my brush, choose my stack that I've just created as one quarter. Rotate it once. Line up with my side. Hit it again. Down, rotate it again. And I have a new different spiral shape. That's awesome. Now this one, as you can see, it actually indents in the middle of each one. It's got like a little cup. So it's got actually a flat surface in there in the middle, which is different. So depending on what you have as your starting shape will determine the width of the middle of the outside. Depending on what shape you use for the outside, you can either use a two or a point either move it up or down and you can either have on the inside it being zero one or two voxels thick um oh, sorry yeah zero one or two voxels thick to actually increase the angle which is what i've done with the ones over there there's the helix which is half a voxel in the middle one voxel on the outside there is the um one that is a, a, like a solid helix, which is this one just here. I'll just put a green mark on here just so you can see which one I'm talking about. There's this one here, which actually, if you look at it, it's thicker at the base than it is at the edge. So it's kind of tapered. And that one is two voxels in the middle and one, uh, and one voxel on the outside. And then there is this guy here, which is the next one I'm just gonna highlight, which is actually two voxels on the outside, uh, sorry, one voxel on the outside and one voxel on the inside. Now, if I wanted to, I can also make a solid spiral with these. For example, if I grab um, that green one I've just made and I just stack it on top of itself, we'll go back over here because you guys have access over here. You don't have access over there. Sorry about that. I can actually stack it right on top of itself rather than apart. And you'll see that they maintain their shape. I'm just going to pick another color. I'm going to pick white. And you can see I have a slice in between. If I wanted to, I could just grab that stack and continue on the pattern. Sorry, who's getting the movement right? Every two. If I could grab that ice there. Then rotate it once. Place it onto the side. One voxel apart. Turn it again. And I'll stop for a second actually so you can have a look at both sides. See one side it's curving around, the other side it's, you can see the actual, the realistic slice of what's happening in the background. Um, but we don't really get to see much of that so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then I paste it again. Paste it again. Slide it up. Mm -hmm. 
There you go. And now you have it so it spirals all the way up. There's no breaks in that entire spiral pattern right up the column. You can make a Twizzler, you can make whatever you like out of that. Also, there's no necessity to just make it two. There's actually four layers in there. So for example, if I grabbed another color, so what I've got here, um, I'm going to grab some wood. I like working with wood. If I paint around another color, see it's all attached. And there are actually three layers in here. Four layers, to be honest. An extra white one. So two green layers and one white one, one wood one. Okay. That's my guide to making spirals. I'm sure that I've probably lost a couple of people. I apologize if I have. It's a challenging bit. This is why I call it voxel Nancy. <laughs> There's a lot of steps. Yeah, it's, that's one of the things about it. It does take a lot of steps, but once you've made it and it's done, you have control. The other thing is, is you can do a lot of um, unique patterns with those kinds of items. If you go into that corner back down there, you'll see I have a table which is half a voxel high. It sits flat on the floor while having a flat top surface. I can put inlays into those um, that are only a quarter voxel wide. I've created all these patterns on the wall. They're all a quarter voxel wide. You'll see that there is the large circular pattern up there. There's three separate circles in that pattern. All of them are geometrically created. There's no tools used for that. I'm not using smoothing or shaping or anything like that. Each one of them is actually individually made by shaping each of the components and putting it together. It's just like a woodwork class. I'm doing it just like a real true 100% woodwork style. And from that, you can create all your own shapes rather than waiting for the procedural engine to kind of smooth something that you're looking for. You actually control all the vertices because you have all the angles already under your control. Yeah, it's the kind of stuff that you do for very, very small, intricate work. Um, fine staircases, fine tables, chairs. With this, you could create a chair with a cushion in the middle of the chair. You could create a square that is slightly raised in the middle, paint that red, have the rest around it uh, brown, one voxel wide, uh, half a voxel wide, but raised up. So you could kind of create some very unusual shapes. Um, that normally you would have twice as large. Um, if I quite yeah. enjoy playing with this stuff. Anyway, I'll go back to Paul Schrodinger because she's over here recording it, trying to uh, make an idea of how it works. Um, yeah, that's basically 90% of how that works. It's all about uh, manipulating the voxel into various different shapes. A voxel can be as you probably already aware, a voxel can be twice as big as it's supposed to be, or it can be uh, nothing. Um, working between a quarter voxel, I find that I have the advantage of using, I can create any of those sizes or shapes um, that I might possibly need. The big advantage is that um, one of the, the things that we're manipulating here is the fact that there are actually hidden voxels that don't exist in this pattern. If you were to highlight this pattern, feel free to have a go at copying this pattern and pasting it and see if you can have a look at it when it's just showing you the square voxels and you'll see there's a whole bunch of missing space in there that is not voxels. Just, uh, you know, flip it, rotate it, spin it around until you've got a copy of it that you're looking at and you'll just see the voxels, the little square cubes that are filled with space and you'll see that they're in a kind of an odd offset pattern. 
none of them are actually touching. They're all kind of filling their own independent space, which is including a half a voxel from those in between. So there's a little space gap rule there that allows you to uh, shapes that shouldn't be able to go up next to each other in uh, quarter voxel space up against each other. Um, an example being, I'll give you an example. I have my long T-bar section here. I can take a, another T-bar. Get out of the ground. I'm just going to expand that out. Oh, just. Because that one is that one. That I can take another T bar. I can place them against each other. I like that one for you. If I wanted, I could create some shape at the top and then I could put a metal top on a hammer or something similar by molding that top shape and then putting it there. Make a hammer, I could flatten the edge of that and make an axe, I could, um, yeah make all sorts of different shapes, but it allows me to just push those two blocks against each other um, in a way that they shouldn't normally, because there's actually a voxel, an invisible uh, air voxel. In